Well, uh, the summer project is to build a set of duplexers. Uh, here, this is K5DT. Uh, for the repeater, instead of uh, working on split site, um, split site works fine. But I feel like I've only had twenty dollars spent towards this duplexer or this tune cavity, and uh, it's already showing a result. Um, one of the downside is I have. Um, I believe this is steel, a steel all thread, three foot long. Uh, this is a galvanized 30 gallon drum um, trash can, I shouldn't say drum. Um, you can solder to it, but brass doesn't want to really solder all that well, or I'm not doing it right. It's really more of a thing for brazing, and uh, yeah, that's something I don't quite know how to do. And uh, I'd have my father do it, but he's out of uh, uh, gas and his torch. And uh, to tune this duplexer, <clears throat> the idea is of a duplexer is an antenna and a can, and then any power that goes into the duplexer uh, at its resonant frequency will be um, radiated out inside this can. It's like a tunable dummy load. It's 50 ohms, so let's just say 146.000, but it's a high impedance uh, to uh, uh, say 147.000, and uh, if there's an antenna on the system, or another duplexer tuned to uh, 147.000, um, the signal is going to want to travel down into that antenna or duplexer, and uh, not this one. And that's kind of the basic principle about how duplexers work. Um, the way I'm going to tune the uh, with an SWR meter is uh, tune for minimum reflection. Sorry, it's kind of dark out here, uh, but put into forward power. Set the needle to where it says 100 with the sensitivity adjustment. Flip it over into uh, reflected power and key down and uh, watch the uh, SWR meter dip back. And that's what we're looking for. So I'll be right back uh, to set everything up and uh, get going here. Alright, so here we go. I'm going to put the uh, unit into forward power. Just line it to get right on that needle. There we go. There's our reflective power, and as you can see, it flicks all the way over to the other side of the scale. And what I'm going to do is adjust this rod. Now, all this rod that's up here, this is a three-foot rod. And for two meters, you want 19 inches there about, depending on what frequency you're on. And, uh, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly pull out this rod, and it does make quite a bit of noise. As you can see there, well, there's a, there was a dip. And, uh... Um, I might add that the pickup loop, and the idea that I got this from, from N4GUS website, uh, Repeater Association, um, I use the same pickup loop, which is, um, the little wire that's attached to this BNC connector here on the inside of the duplexer. It didn't quite work for me, um... Oh, by the way, I'm running 5 watts low power, and I have a fan on the heat sink, and I'm not too worried about SWR for long periods of time. But uh, that didn't really work for me, and what I did have to add was a little uh, alligator jumper down at the bottom. And it seems like I can get a noticeable dip here if I pull out this rod. Right about there. Oh man, it seems to be a really picky dip. Come on. Now that's pretty good. That's. I'm gonna try to. Ah, man. Dang, this is hard to do. Oh man, you almost saw it. There we go, one to three. That's a sign of a dip right there. Come on, can I get you any lower than that? I think that's about where we're going to be. Uh, so stand by one second, I'm going to put the uh, nut right there on that uh, spot and see if we can't get it any closer. 
Okay, let's just double check our settings really quick to make sure I haven't knocked or bumped anything. Yeah, we are kind of out of alignment. SWR jumps up. We're still kind of high. I'll focus, come on. Ugh. There we go. Hey, easy now. I think the camera may have glitched on me, but anyway, what I did was I held down this nut and I tuned it down. It looks like it's going to be the lowest SWR we are going to get. Anyway, uh, so with that, this is uh, K5 DVT. I'm showing you at least the uh, proof of concept duplexer for the repeater.